is any of this doing? Um, it's already done, actually. They've already, they've already achieved victory number one, which is, which is that it's killed apathy. I mean, we've been waiting for, the, for a long time, man. And, uh, and sooner or later, I knew this was, was going to happen. And I've, I've been I've been begging for it for a long time. But but I I um, I'm I'm very hopeful about this, and I'm glad that it's disorganized and doesn't have a leader, and all the typical things that kind of suck the soul out of when people want to get involved. Then you go to that first meeting, then the second meeting, and the third, right? And it's just like meeting after meeting and things. And now we've got to have dues, and we've got to do, you know, and it just, there's, I'm sure some structure will form out of this someday. But right now, it's enough that people just get up off the couch and get involved and, and stand up for this country and stand up for the, your fellow citizens and quit being divided by those in power who have who have sought to keep working people fighting each other instead of coming together. And I think this is one of the great things that's going to come out of this, is that, that we in this room can have different political viewpoints, so we can have different feelings maybe about different issues, but on the core, core things that matter right now, the things that we need to do to save this country, we are in agreement on. The greed on Wall Street has to stop. People who break the law down there have to go to jail. The rich have to pay their fair share of taxes. The very least, right? The very least. I, I wonder really how many average Americans know that, that if people who make over $110,000 a year pay zero taxes after that 110,000 uh, into uh, Social Security, into FICA, any of that, it's zero, zero. So they only pay the 7% on the first uh, 110,000 and then they pay nothing after that. And you may say, wow, you know, that's enough, they paid enough on that. Well, yes and no, except, except that means if you take their whole income, if they made a million dollars last year, their FICA tax is not 7%, yours is. So you're paying, you're, Who's getting hurt by this? If you're paying 7% on your $30,000 or $40,000 income, think of what, what a chunk of money that is uh, compared to somebody who makes over $110,000 pays nothing after that $110,000. You know, and this is going on way, this is just one example of what's wrong with the, with the way the taxes are. It's going on and on for way too long. People have had it, and they're going to stand up now, and I think that good things are going to happen as, as a result of this. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I uh, have to say that I have, um, you know, I voted for Barack Obama, and uh, that was a, that was a great a great day uh, going in there and voting. I I really uh, I don't know if any of you had the same feeling if you voted for him. I went in that booth and I got emotional. I mean, I couldn't believe I was voting for this man. I couldn't believe that. The eight years of madness that we've just been through was going to come to an end. I just, I just, I got emotional. I saw his name down there in the ballot. I took the felt, I, I vote in Michigan, so I took the felt pen and I circled in the thing with the ink. And, and what a, what a, the tears I had fell exactly on the eighth spot and smeared the ballot. And I'm in there trying to, like, I'm trying to wipe it up and I'm blowing on it, you know, to, 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 to dry my ballot. And my wife is standing outside the curtain and she's going, what's going on in there? <laughs> she doesn't sound like that. She's very sweet. Uh, although there'd be nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and I came out and I was all red-eyed and she was like, Pull yourself together, man. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't. I didn't think I'd live to see this day in this country. And in fact, I couldn't believe his name was on the ballot. Did you see his name? Yes, I saw his name. No, did you see his name? Yes, I saw his name. No! Did you see his name? <laughs> it said Barack Hussein Obama. I was like in there going, no! <laughs> Where were the consultants? Why didn't someone, how did this get out there? 
I felt like I was in the Matrix all of a sudden. I was in this slow motion. No! No! Not to say no! We'll put this on here. We have to win North Carolina. We have to win Indiana. No! There goes Virginia. No! Barack Hussein Obama. We put Hussein on the ballot. We put Hussein on the ballot. What kind of evil? Somebody asked me, why did you put, why did you do, why would you risk that post 9-11 America? We're in the middle of this war. Why would you put your name, Hussein, on the ballot? He said, well, it's actually, it's, it's an Arabic word. It means kindness. And he said, that's my name. He said, that's my name. That's my name. That took courage to put Hussein that took spine. It took a backbone. Right? There's kids shopping here, so I won't tell you what else it took. <laughs> I want that man back. I want him back. I want Barack Hussein Obama back. What happened? What happened when he got in there? It was just like, well, okay, you know, Oh, oh, you smacked it out of my hand. Okay, here's another olive branch. Oh, you smacked it out of my hand. Okay, here's another olive. And we have watched this for three years. Forty olive branches later. He's even to the point now where he, last year he was putting their language in his bill so they would like vote for it. Now he's putting their bill in his bill. Now he just he just names it differently. It's their stuff they used to vote for. And no, because on inauguration night, uh, Boehner and Cantor and McConnell got together and they decided um, uh, we're going to ignore everything he's going to do, we're going to stop him, and we're not going to let anything through. And that's what they did. They treated him as the invisible president, their version of the invisible man. A great book by Ralph Ellison, I'm sure this story carries, about what it was like to grow up being a black man in the 1930s and 40s in America. You were invisible. You didn't exist. You could be in the same room and talk right by you. You could be in the elevator. They didn't see you there. You lived on the other side of town, out of sight, out of mind. Incredible book. Many of us read it in high school, right? College. And they decided to treat him as the invisible president. Instead of him acting like Franklin Roosevelt and saying, I'm sorry, I was just elected with a 10 million vote margin, three times what Bush beat Kerry with, that's a mandate, I'm in charge, we've got both houses, you know, I mean, to his credit, right? He came in, turning the other cheek, love your enemy, and you got to say on some level, wow, that actually takes courage, too. But after the 15th or 20th time of them slapping the olive branch out of your hand, you have to say, okay, you don't want to play. I'm sorry, I tried to play. Now, you're going to the timeout room for the next two years while we get some work done to save this friggin' country. And that's what should happen. Now, <coughs> he's all animated again, and he's saying the right things, and the Justice Department is stopping at the first merger ever in the last, what, 20 or 30 years, the AT&T T-Mobile. When's the last time we saw the Justice Department stop a merger? You know, he's stopping that, he's doing, he's, they're going after the banks and the mortgage fraud, they're going to do the jobs, all these things are great. That's a strange way to play football. To sort of either, to sit it out for the first three quarters or to, or to run in the other direction, the wrong way, and then come back in the fourth quarter, he's got one year left, and then try and win the game. That put all of us in a lot of jeopardy, Mr. Obama. Put this country in jeopardy by not coming in there and kicking ass and taking names. Well, that's the past. We can't do anything about it now. We have to encourage him more of what he's doing now. Get have his back. And uh, and um, and we need to organize ourselves locally in our neighborhoods, in our schools. And do the things that we need to do here. And hope that that has a certain effect.